next on the news. We'll meet the woman who for the last 30 years has run Immaculate Heart of Mary's food pantry and why her mission is so close to her heart. Our own nation is led by a man who publicly and proudly proclaims his Catholic faith, but at the same time is delusional enough to make the sign of the cross during a pro-abortion rally. The Vatican is offering guidance on how to obtain a plenary indulgence during the upcoming Jubilee of Hope. Plus, she said God called her to Howard University School of Divinity. Now 83-year-old Marie Fowler is the college's oldest graduate. I'm Christine Persichetti. Courage News starts right now. For the last 30 years, Immaculate Heart of Mary's Food Pantry has been run by a woman who knows what it's like to go without. Jerry Cassone packs, delivers, and dishes out kindness to hundreds every year. And as Courage News' Jessica Easthope reports, feeding others is what fuels her mission. Jerry Cassone heads out of Mass at Immaculate Heart of Mary Church in Windsor Terrace and across the street. Top of the morning. To give communion to a homebound parishioner. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Body of Christ, Light of God, surround you. It's her first stop of many. And then she's off, back to church, to pack and pack some more. As the director of the church's food pantry, she makes deliveries to those who can't pick up their bags. Emma. Hey, honey bunch. We're here with your food. How long have you been coming to the food pantry? From the doing first it, day. Really? I've been yeah. doing it 29 years. In the bags are essentials. Rice, pasta, beans, fruit, oh. corn, ham. But Jerry knows better than anyone. What these people need goes beyond food. It really feels like a lifetime ago. She used to be one of them. My mother and father had eight children, really struggling. The doorbell rang, and it was a complete Thanksgiving dinner, turkey and all. The relief on my mother's face was the first time I really understood kindness. Today, the food pantry feeds hundreds every year. Jerry operates it the same way it was all those years ago, treating everyone she serves with dignity. They've had struggles throughout their life. So if I can just show someone a little love during the day, I'm going to do it, you know? Her life has come full circle, and what's remained at its core is her deep faith. I live by the motto, the greatest exercise for the human heart is to reach down and lift someone up. That's what we are all here for. Eight years ago, when Jerry's kidneys failed, her son gave her a second chance. He said to me, Ma, you gave me life. I'm going to give you life. And I've been able to do eight additional years of service. She's continued to see her life as a gift, one she never hesitates to share with others. I know that God has a purpose. There's a reason I'm here. So Jerry keeps packing. Someone else takes care of the rest. God is good. In Windsor Terrace, Jessica East Hope, Currents News. If you'd like to help Jerry and the work she does at Immaculate Heart of Mary's Food Pantry, donations of non-perishable items, toiletries, and essentials can be dropped off at the church located at 2805 Fort Hamilton Parkway in Windsor Terrace. Or you can call Jerry at 718-887-5366. President Biden's stance on abortion came under fire during a commencement speech at Benedictine College in Kansas. Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker, a three-time Super Bowl champ, blasted Biden over his support for abortion as a practicing Catholic. Our own nation is led by a man who publicly and proudly proclaims his Catholic faith, but at the same time is delusional enough to make the sign of the cross during a pro-abortion rally. He has been so vocal in his support for the murder of innocent babies that I'm sure to many people, it appears that you can be both Catholic and pro-choice. Butker was referring to Biden's use of the sign of the cross while listening to pro-abortion remarks made during a speech by the Democratic Party chair in Florida last month. Biden is the nation's second ever Roman Catholic president. 
A victory in the battle against abortion in Missouri. Governor Mike Parson has signed legislation to kick Planned Parenthood out of the state's Medicaid program. This means Missouri will join Arkansas, Mississippi, and Texas in successfully blocking Medicaid funding from the organization. Parson said his state has ended all elective abortions and approved new support for mothers, expecting mothers and children. A state law prohibiting most abortions took effect after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned a nationwide right to abortion in 2022. Arizona's Supreme Court has delayed enforcement of a Civil War era abortion ban. The ruling allows for a 90 day stay of the 1864 law as requested by the state's attorney general. Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs signed a repeal of the abortion ban, but it will not go into effect until 90 days after the state's legislative session ends. The U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops is urging Congress to address the nation's maternal health crisis. The committee chairman wrote to lawmakers citing the high maternal mortality rate. The letter asks that Congress enact policies that advance the health and safety of women, children and families. Published research found that maternal death rates in the U.S. increased by 144 percent since 2002. The data also found that black and indigenous women are at particularly high risk. The Vatican is offering guidance on how to obtain a plenary indulgence during the upcoming Jubilee of Hope. The Holy Year 2025 will begin on December 24th of this year, and there are a few things you can do during the Jubilee to free yourself from temporal punishment for your sins. Among them, make a pilgrimage to a sacred Jubilee site, make a pious visit to any other sacred place in the world, and conduct works of mercy and penance. The Holy Father will celebrate Pentecost at the Vatican next Sunday. It's the celebration of the descent of the Holy Spirit upon Mary, the Mother of God, the Apostles, and other followers of Jesus. Last year, the Pope reminded the faithful that it is the harmony from the Spirit that directs the course of time and renews the face of the earth. Pope Francis made a call to put the Holy Spirit back at the center of the church so that its teaching is not an empty doctrine. Pope Francis met with Ecuador's new president at the Apostolic Palace. At only 35 years old, Daniel Noboa is the second youngest president in Ecuador's history. The pair met for 30 minutes and exchanged gifts. Noboa brought the Pope a carving done by Ecuadorian artisans. In 2015, the Pope visited Ecuador during a trip to Latin America. It's never too late to realize your dreams. That's the message from Marie Fowler, who received her doctorate from Howard University at the age of 83. Current News' Michelle Powers reports she believes God called her to the school's divinity program. For Marie Fowler, as Howard University's most senior student, she says earning her doctorate degree in divinity was a calling from God. It was never my thought that I would go beyond maybe one semester because after all, I started school when I had been out of school since 1959. I didn't know if I could even retain information. After initially doubting her ability, Dr. Fowler says it was her parents' experiences and her father's words still ringing in her head that pushed her forward. My mom and dad was born in an era when it was illegal for them to learn to read and write. We taught my, my dad how to read and write and how to sign his name. And throughout her three years at Howard's Divinity School, Dr. Fowler made her mark. She was the life of the party. She knew what she needed, what she wanted, and she, she came here and she did that. The other thing that I want to say, it is never too late. I want everyone to to realize that michelle powers currents news and from the oldest graduate of howard to the newest citizens of iowa there seems to be a baby boom happening there st luke's hospital in cedar rapids is seeing double last month they delivered six pairs of twins and one set of triplets but in march 11 sets of twins were born at the hospital. What is in the water there? The nurses say that they typically see only two or three sets of twins every month. And they say while delivering twins essentially doubles the work for them, it's also doubly rewarding. How adorable. And before we go, do you have a story idea or want to share a tip? Email us at newstips at thesalesmedia.org or call our 24-hour number 718-517-3122. 
That is this Cards News update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.